Hello everyone, welcome to the Power Supply video series with Brian Bartell, Susie Collins, and myself, Justin Poulin. Today we are gonna be talking about reordering and safety stock, and we're gonna give you some real practical calculations and formulas to help you with that. Brian, this is a conversation that really spun out of a video we did around emergency preparedness. You had some things happen in the Pacific Northwest, and it was really a, a funny conversation in some ways because, Susie, you were saying how, hey, I'm here in Arizona, and sometimes we don't see the weather, but it impacts us depending on where we're sourcing our supplies from. And then you actually had an emergency pop up in the middle of the recording. It was absolutely hilarious, uh, the timing of all of that. So, you know, Brian, you kind of reached out and said, hey, you know, we've got, uh, you know, maybe some some additional follow up conversation here to help people um, who are out there, you know, just have some good formulas and calculations for ensuring that they have a safety stock and how they manage that through reordering. So, Brian, I'll let you kind of introduce it. I think also, uh, you know, maybe in the comments of this video, we'll make sure to add these formulas for reference in the description here on YouTube, um, just so that people can see those those calculations as well. Perfect. Yeah, well, I, I guess I should start with leading. I think if you talk to um, supply chain directors within healthcare and then with, you know, outside of healthcare, these formulas may match. They may be a little bit different. I think the most important thing is that when you're doing this, uh, you should have some sort of data driven analysis of why you're setting a reorder point and a reorder quantity. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of the first thing. So I'm not saying that this is, uh, you know, 100% correct. I'm just going to share kind of what, what I've developed and what I use and seems to work well because it's relatively simple. Um, so I know, Justin, you'll kind of share these, but you know, the, the reorder point formula, um, it's really based off of uh, a few key things, and these are relatively easy to get out of most of the MMIS, Materials Management Information Systems. Uh, but when you look at your reorder point uh, formula, you're really looking at the average daily usage, and then that's multiplied by your lead time plus your safety stock. So this is something that, you know, you want to know what your average daily usage is. And this is where it gets tricky, and, and Susie, you can probably attest yeah. to this too. One thing that I always look at too is that, is this, you know, something that we truly use on a daily basis? If it is, then you can kind of have that baseline and that's a number that I'm going to trust. But one thing that I always keep in the back of my mind, uh, we used to do uh, like cataract surgeries and we had these cataract packs and we only did those once every two weeks. But when that doctor came, we would do like 12 to 15 cases. So if you look at that over the course of two weeks, that's less than one case a week. So if you use a standard formula, it's going to tell you keep one case and then, you know, you'll order another case and it'll come back in. But Susie, <laughs> you probably know if you keep one case and you've got a surgery that needs 12 or 15, that's going to be an issue. So it's always important to know your products as well. So again, remember when you're using a data driven approach, you've got to look at, you know, how these things are ordered. Is it something that's a consistent basis or is this something that's very cyclical and driven by a specific event? Um, then when you, so look do at you want to comment quantity, on that real quick too? Like, I just, I'm, I'm actually slightly intrigued because we've had some challenges as we've moved ERP systems between unit of measure changes and just numbers that were entered. So I think the other point is how does it get pulled right so if it's if it's a box of something and maybe you keep six on the shelf but there's the potential that four boxes could go out at the same time i think that's another factor that we have to think about is how is it going out and where does it go how many pars is it sitting on Mm -hmm. I was going to even ask a question about lead time too, because I feel like maybe lead time is one of those that could have some confounding variables in it, depending on like how large is the organization? Do you have a warehouse where you're stocking? Right. And so what's the actual lead time to get it from a centralized warehouse to actually getting it on the shelves? Is that, how do you look at that particular, you know, figure in your calculations, Brian, is, is that lead time, not just manufacturer lead time, like it's lead time from manufacturer shipping till you get it on the shelf. This is from order time. So we don't, again, the, the bulk of what we order is coming from a distributor. 
uh, you know, the good, the bad, the everything that comes in between of that. So lead time is when that the the time that the PO is cut, the date that the PO is cut until the date that it's received. We don't have a lot of like in between things. So once that buyer cuts the PO, it goes out same day when it's received. That means it's physically here. We put everything back um, away on that same day as well. But it, it's a good. It's you're right, Justin. That's a moving target. So you don't just set a lead time based on one point in history. This is something that we update on a, basically a monthly basis. We run a new lead report that shows us because something that might have taken three days, typical lead time, maybe now in the last couple of months, they've had some shortages, which we've, we've seen plenty of those. And now your lead time right. calculation needs to be updated because it's taking two weeks. So it's not a static number. And I don't, maybe that kind of helps too, Justin, that that lead yeah. time, it, it's something just like you're looking at usage, you know, your usage can go up and down, especially like on a more seasonal type item. Mm -hmm. The same thing with lead times, that's not a static number. That's something that you need to be constantly adjusting um, and looking at how, what that current lead time is. We we use, it's a like a function of the last three months, I believe. So like in, in what the class that I teach at one of the community colleges, we talk about usage and it's called an in period moving average. And we choose to use the last three months. So again, that's another kind of probably overgeneralization of when you're looking at numbers. But if I look at the last three months, that's relatively pretty, yeah. um, you know, it gets us directionally where we need to go. But then if there's a spike or now we're heading into flu season, again, you've got to know your products because there's certain things that that lag time can can hurt you on. So we're, we're analyzing this, too, when there's a shortage on the shelf. You know, if we realize that we run out of stock or we're low stock, then we start looking at the most frequent usage or most current usage and can adjust these accordingly, too. Unit of measure <clears throat> and how's it, how is it going out versus how you're ordering it? And is it being picked correctly? Because there's... There's a lot of human factors that can make the numbers not work. So it might just take additional, you know, looking at it. But I think that's, but you have to have a starting point, right? If you don't have a good starting point, you don't know where to go. And then you're guessing and that's the worst thing we can do. All right. That's a great overview of the reorder point formula. And so we're going to do this in a series um, so on the next video, we're going to be talking about the reorder quantity formula. And then in the third video of the series, we'll be talking about establishing formal safety stock and we'll be going through these formulas. We will post all three of Brian's formulas in the, uh, in the uh, description for all three videos, but this will give everybody a great overview. And, and once again, Brian and Susie, uh, this is a nice deep dive into the practical day to day, uh, lives that so many of our, uh, watchers and, and listeners and followers of power supply are living with every single day. And so Brian, uh, and Susie, thanks so much for sharing, uh, your thoughts on reorder point. And we'll be back in, uh, in just a few weeks with another video. Thank you.